Hi, welcome to Creative for the Impossible. I'm your host, Chrissy Nelson, and I'm so excited to welcome you back here in my living room where I can remind you that God sees you, He cares for you, and He has an amazing plan for your life. Even if it seems impossible, you can do it. Today, we're gonna to be talking about your soul and how our souls can grow weary and tired and need to find rest. But the good news is there's rest in Jesus. We have a special guest joining us today, Melanie Joy, and she's gonna share her story of how God brought her from a place of chronic illness to complete wholeness and health in Him. So stick around. All right, today I'm really excited to get into this discussion about our soul. This is something that I've needed to come to a place where I realize the difference between my mind, body, and soul, and how my soul will grow weary and tired, and it needs a place of rest, it needs an outlet. David knew about the soul. David talks over and over in the Psalms about his soul. Oh, how, why are you downcast, my soul, my soul within me? And it was like he would minister to his own soul through prayer, you know? And that really inspired me to go on a journey of, of discovery and, and searching this out. What is the difference in our soul, in our spirit, and in our mind? What does that look like? Um, the truth of the matter is, is that we do have a soul and our soul within us, it's this eternal place that's gonna live on beyond our physical body. And it's this place in our spirit and in our heart that, that knows so much truth about Jesus, but also is very sensitive and very tender. And it can get weary and tired because of the, the weight of the world and discouragement and heaviness and, and sickness and illness and just any of the, the sort of junk and the day-to-day rigmarole of life can begin to pressure us and put pressure on us and our soul grows weary in us. But man, what good news it is that Jesus came into the earth, the son of the living God, and he brought this message of hope and healing for our soul. When I look at the scripture here in Psalm 42, it says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? And then I think of when Jesus is in the earth and he's, he's saying, I'm God, I'm here, I've come. And he gives this beautiful commission and invitation where he says in Matthew 11:28 through 30, he says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus comes into the earth. He brings this beautiful message of hope and of healing and of peace and rest for our souls. So the thing about it is finding it going for it, searching that out. How do we obtain this rest that Jesus offers? And we see it in scripture time and again. We see the women a lot of times in the gospels where they hear about Jesus, they hear the good news, they hear that he's come and hope begins to rise up in them. Why? Because their soul knows something that maybe their mind doesn't even know. Their soul is aware that hope has come. Hope has entered the earth and he's, he's there and he's Jesus. And they go to him. In, in a previous episode, we talked about encounters with God and we talked about the women these three different women who Jesus encountered in one way or another. One of the women, the woman with the issue of blood, she sought out Jesus. She went and reached for Jesus. She had hope in her that she would find healing in him, right? And she, if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would find that healing. And she did. She encountered Jesus. We talked about a little bit about the woman who was caught in the case of adultery and she was thrown before Jesus, right? By her accusers, but yet her soul within her needed hope. And thankfully, even in that, she found it because Jesus, when he encountered her and he said, he called her daughter and he empowered her to get up and sin no more. And then we have the Samaritan woman who encountered Jesus. Her soul needed refreshing. Her soul needed the water that she was offering to him, right? And he said to her, 
I have living water. I have something that you're not even, if you just knew that you, who I was, you would ask me for a drink and I would give it to you. Jesus is coming to us in the gospels and he's showing us this beautiful picture of what rest for our souls can look like. Now I want us to open up our Bible and I want to look at another woman in the scriptures. And it's the woman that, uh, the, the title, the header of the section in your Bible is going to say Jesus anointed by a sinful woman. And it's the woman who we know about many of us. She poured out her finest perfume on his feet and it's found in Luke 7, 36 through 50. And I'm just going to read a portion of it here. It says now in verse 36 of chapter seven, now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he, <clears throat> so he went to the Pharisee's house. He reclined at the table. I would love for Jesus to come recline at my table. When a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet, weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. She wiped them with her hair, kissed them and poured her perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited Jesus into his home saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who's touching him and what kind of woman that she is, that she is a sinner. It's interesting then, it goes on to say, as you read further, that Jesus heard his thoughts. Jesus heard Simon's thoughts, what he was thinking, and he addressed that. And it talks about it in here, and I'm just gonna sort of sum it up for us. Jesus gave him that parable of if two people owed a debt and one had a greater debt than the other, but both debts were forgiven, who would love more? and be more grateful. And Simon says, well, the one who's had a greater debt would love more. And Jesus uses that to, su to sort of give, paint the picture of this woman that she, who Simon deemed a sinful woman, she was very aware that her sin separated her from God. And so therefore, because she was forgiven much, Jesus says it, that she was forgiven much, she loved much. And the thing I find interesting here is that if only Simon had realized that what he lacked in his spirit and in his soul was just as much of a separation between him and God as what this woman who he called sinful had the separation between God. Simon didn't realize that Jesus was the answer. He didn't realize that Jesus could quench the thirst of his soul like he was quenching the thirst of this woman. This precious woman saw Jesus as everything. She had that same hope stir up inside of her that if she could bring her finest things to the feet of Jesus, if she could bring all of her hope, her tears, even her hair, which in those days, hair was, it was something that was very coveted by women in those days. And here she is wiping it, washing his feet with her tears and with her hair. Her hope was in Jesus and she saw Jesus as everything. She knew that Jesus brought the restoration and the healing and the ministry for her soul that she needed. Friend, this is what we need today. We need to realize that Jesus is everything. We need to put all of our hope, all of our priceless possessions at his feet. Everything we have, we have an opportunity to lay it all there at his feet and to receive from him his promise of come to me, you who are weary and burdened, and you'll find rest for your soul. All right, coming up, I am so excited to have my guest, Melanie Joy, with us. She has a testimony of how God healed not just her physical body that was a chronic heart condition that she was diagnosed with to wholeness, but he also healed and restored her soul where she had wounds from her childhood that she didn't even realize were there until later years. You're not gonna wanna miss Melanie's story, so stick around with us. We'll be right back after this short break. Sometimes we just need that reminder of who God says we are and what he thinks we can do. And I love putting that on a shirt and wearing that and telling myself and the world that I'm created for the impossible, that nothing's impossible for those who believe. And I love to start my day out drinking coffee, hot coffee right out of my mug, getting that Jesus perspective for my day that God thinks I can do anything and I'm created for the impossible. Get your created for the impossible apparel and more at ChrissyNelson.com.
God has an amazing plan for your life. Jesus himself said that nothing would be impossible if you believe. In Created for the Impossible, Chrissy Nelson draws from her history of powerful God encounters and shares relevant biblical accounts. Learn to exchange wrong thoughts for what God says about you and learn how to let his promises supernaturally adjust your thinking. God poured into me, I poured into this book, and I pray that it pours into you. Get your copy of Created for the Impossible by visiting chrissynelson.com. Welcome back. All right, I am so excited to welcome my guest, Melanie Joy. She is a holistic health specialist, and she's a dear friend. <laughs> and she has actually helped me personally in my health journey, where I was fighting with some physical chronic fatigue and some adrenal fatigue, things like that. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew I needed help, and I'm so thankful that I found this amazing woman. She's a woman of God, and she's going to share a little bit about how God took, like I said before, her story of chronic illness, where the doctors were saying, you're gonna to have to be on these medications your whole life, and how God walked her through this natural path through natural medicine and supplements and brought her into wholeness. And now she has used that to launch her into her career that she's got and has helped hundreds of individuals find wholeness and health. So Melanie, welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here with us I'm today. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I want to hear more. I want, will you tell us more about your story of how, what it was that you were dealing with, what it was that you were diagnosed with and how that felt and then how God led you to your healing. So I was actually diagnosed with a heart condition when I was 21 years old. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the doctors told me that I would have to be on painkillers and anti-inflammatories for the rest of my life. Yeah. Now, I didn't have any knowledge of natural medicine. I really just wanted God to heal me. Yeah. I, I wanted an instant miracle. I would get prayed for and at the time I was dealing with chronic fatigue. Um, I was in a lot of pain. I had chronic pain and I just wanted an answer. I was struggling to find an answer and I started seeing natural doctors and really believed though that God put them across my path. I believe that he healed me with his medicine. Yeah. And so the heart condition was reversed. I got a full recovery of my physical body and it was, it was a miracle. It wasn't instant. It was yeah. a journey. I had to walk it out, but I became a new person. Wow. I love how you say that God used you through his medicine, you know, and you're referring to just the, the things that are in the earth, mm -hmm. right? For us, what mm -hmm. kind of, I mean, supplements. Natural medicine, and, supplements, herbs, lifestyle changes. Yeah. And then I had to do the emotions because Chrissy, my physical body got healed, but I still had this underlying battle with my mind and my emotions. And wow. so I needed to have healing in my soul mm -hmm. to have a full total body healing. Wow. So you're, so that was revealed to you about you know, so your physical body gets totally healed mm -hmm. over how long of a period would you say that you're walking this out? My physical body was healed in just a few years. Okay. It was just a few years. I was working with a practitioner and I, that was something that I had to walk through. You know, mm -hmm. I knew these are the things that I need to do to stay healthy. I changed my lifestyle. I became knowledgeable about the human body and I went back to school and researched wow. alternative medicine and studied natural medicine. And I wanted to help others because I had found something that truly helped me. Mm -hmm. And I believe that God was in it. I believe that he should get the glory when we're healed. Wow. Yeah, I love that. I love that you are seeing, you know, it's like you're seeing Jesus as everything. You're seeing God in, mm -hmm. you know, that general revelation of mm -hmm. his creation through everything that he's put here on the earth for us, through the herbs, through all of that, that that's here at our disposal. Um, now, you mentioned a little bit ago about after your body was physically healed, mm -hmm. some issues in your, your heart and your mm -hmm. soul began to sort of bubble up and mm -hmm. you realized that you still needed some additional healing. Yeah, I began to have some memories from my childhood begin to pop up, some traumatic events, and 
I couldn't ignore the memories or the feelings any longer. And so I had to become vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I became vulnerable and I wrote everything out in a journal and I talked with someone about really difficult things that I went through as a child that was a secret. And what do we know about secrets? The longer they're buried, the more they're gonna get louder and louder. Yeah. So I wasn't being attacked by the enemy. Th it was my soul was trying to process wow. what had been buried. It was crying it out. Was, it was crying out. And the Holy Spirit was leading it every step of the way saying, here's a little reminder, you need to deal with this. This is buried. And it's those things that get buried that can actually affect our physical body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So would you say that your body was, it was on the journey to wholeness it and was on the journey not to wholeness. quite yet there then? Here's how it connects all together. The soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. Yeah. So I was still having this battle in my mind and my emotions, and I didn't want to be led by fear but it was almost like the fear would creep up and it's so powerful, it almost makes you think you have to make a decision in fear. Yeah. And so I became vulnerable. I had to you know, really open up and share what was going on. And um, then I really had to apply the Word of God mm. to those memories and to those emotions. So I had to take the Word of God, I had to take the blood of Jesus yeah. and apply it to those wounds, to those areas where I was hurting. And, you know, of course, the blood of Jesus washes us clean, it breaks strongholds. We, um, we end up getting forgiveness and then we get to look at that situation, that picture and forgive other people that are involved. And then I had to apply the resurrection power. Mm. So the blood and the resurrection, it's this dual medicine that heals our wounded soul. And that's when we can have freedom in our mind, freedom in our thoughts, freedom in our emotions. Mm -hmm. And then we're making better decisions and um, our soul then matures up to our spirit because we know as believers, our spirit is perfected once we accept Christ, but it's our soul that is being progressively transformed throughout our lifetime. So we get the soul healing, now we then have the tools for processing our everyday life experiences. Wow. That's phenomenal. And I love what you say. Um, Melanie's written a book here too called The Grecian Garden. And she's got, you've got your story in mm -hmm. here, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, but I love what you say in there that it, you say, my pain brought me my calling. Mm -hmm. And you say it's the same for us that our problem is a catalyst to our promise. Yes. Yeah, I love that. We're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna come back with Melanie in just a short bit. And we're gonna talk more about finding healing and rest for our souls. And we're gonna get some insight from Melanie on if you're feeling like your soul is weary and downcast, and maybe you've got some physical things that you're dealing with and, and whatnot, and maybe your soul is feeling broken. And we're gonna talk with her more about that and have her give us some of her tools and insight that's really gonna help you in your journey. Is there a woman in your life and you look at her and you say to yourself, her story just needs to be told. If only I could shine a light on what God has done in her life. Friend, now's your chance. We are taking nominations for the wonder women in your life. These women that aren't afraid to go after God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength and rise up in the strength and dignity and destiny that God has placed on them. Nominate them and get more information by visiting us at ChrissyNelson.com forward slash wonder woman. Welcome back. I'm here talking with my friend, Melanie Joy, who's written this amazing book called The Grecian Garden, and it's her natural path to wellness from where God took her from chronic illness to complete wholeness through not just natural medicine, but also how her soul found healing and rest in Jesus and brought her to this beautiful whole person that she is today. And I'm so excited that you're with us. Now, we were talking about your journey before we went on our break. And um, I wanna know, what, it, what would you say, Melanie, is one of the most common things that you see people coming in that you, you meet with people, you've got a practice and they're coming in and they're presenting with some 
chronic issues and things that they're facing, what's one of the most common that you see? So one of the most common things that I see is chronic fatigue, which is also called adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. So this is a person who is just worn out, they're exhausted, they feel tired, they may have a good night's sleep, but they don't wake up rested, mm -hmm. and they just feel kind of wired and tired or burnt out, and they have difficulty with stress of their everyday life. Yeah. So what I like to do is I like to first test their cortisol and just find out, okay, well, what stage of adrenal fatigue are, are they really in? Mm -hmm. Do they have high cortisol? Do they have low cortisol? Because high and low cortisol can kind of mimic and have the same symptoms. So I like to first find out which stage of adrenal fatigue they're in. And then based upon what stage, I can then put them on very specific supplements to correct the problem. Mm -hmm. but but with adrenal fatigue, most importantly, you know, the body is saying that it's tired. The body okay. needs rest. So most importantly, de-stressing as much as possible and even incorporating some therapies to help your body manage stress, like making a massage therapy appointment or trying to go to bed a little bit earlier or just limiting your schedule to where you're not go, go, go all the time, but yeah. where you're giving your body some time to just relax and rest instead of always pushing it. So a lot of my clients are mothers and so they <laughs> look at me at this point and they're like, Melanie, how do I, how do I still do that when my life is so busy? And yeah. that's where the supplements come in and the dietary changes because it will then help you to accomplish what it is that you need to accomplish. Yeah. So usually right away with adrenals, we do blood sugar balancing, which is like chromium, or um, if someone needs quick energy, we can do vitamin C. And I've never yet told anyone to give up their morning cup of coffee, so I'm totally okay with yeah. some caffeine in the morning. <laughs> um, so that one I'm good with. But with adrenal fatigue, it's it's a sign that the body needs to slow down. And so yeah. a lot of times I'm just helping people listen to their body and yeah. get to know the signals for when their body needs a change or an adjustment. Mm -hmm. So if someone's watching right now and they're saying, that, that sounds like me, I'm raising my hand at home, you can't see me, but I feel like I've got adrenal fatigue, mm -hmm. but I, I can't get to you and I can't ask you these things. What are some practical things that the viewer can do right now today mm -hmm. uh, to start finding some relief? So the first thing is to cut out refined foods and refined sugars okay. because these are going to be things that are going to be very difficult to digest and it's going to give you that quick kind of pick up feeling and then mm -hmm. immediately you're gonna go crash right back into adrenal fatigue. So the number one thing with adrenal fatigue is to eat regularly. So I usually say to eat every four hours mm -hmm. and try to include a protein, a carb, and a fat. So that could be as simple as for breakfast an omelet with eggs and spinach and maybe some bacon. You've got protein, carbs, and fats. Or um, maybe at lunchtime it's you know a protein and a sweet potato and uh, spinach. Mm -hmm. So you're eating combinations of food that is going to not only balance your blood sugar, but it's going to that's balance good. and stabilize your hormones. Yeah. And so that's that tells us that your cortisol is gonna be where it needs to be throughout the day to give you the energy. I can't tell you how many clients I see and their meals are missed and then their body is relying on their stress hormones and that's why they get into burnout yeah, because wow. we rely so much on the stress hormones. Hmm. So just the simple fact of eating regularly throughout the day mm -hmm. really takes the stress off the physical body. That's good, that's good. Um, and I assume those are probably some things you talk about in your yes. book, right? <laughs> and you know, you mentioned earlier about you, there were seven steps, seven mm -hmm. things that you did. Mm -hmm. um, and is that one of the steps, one of the things you did yes, for your just, diet? For just adrenal fatigue, it was eating regularly and eating real food. Mm -hmm. So just avoiding the, the refined foods that are difficult for our bodies to process. You know, if we're constantly eating heavy food, our, our day is spent digesting our food. We're gonna feel weighed down. We're gonna feel tired. Yeah. We're gonna feel exhausted. We're not gonna be able to accomplish what it is that we need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So, and there's so many tools, there's so many supplements, but I think personalizing supplements is so key to someone's wellness, especially when I was sick I was really sensitive yeah. I couldn't take you know just a random supplement off the store I needed someone to personally tell me what is going on in my yeah. body and what it is that that you need to take so yeah. 
I think the takeaway for most people is it has to be personalized to their body yeah, and their true. situation. Mm -hmm. And you talked earlier too about your soul and how you found healing in the physical and then God really brought you through this soul healing. What do you wanna say you know, to people who feel like that's where I'm at? Mm -hmm. My soul is feeling broken. Some things have surfaced in my spirit. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Holy Spirit's revealing mm -hmm. some pain. How do, how do people find rest for mm -hmm. their soul? So um, in Hebrews 4.12, it says that for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, dividing even soul from spirit. So what that tells me is that the spirit is, is perfect. The spirit is separate from the soul, but the problem is in the wounded soul. Mm. So when we have a wounded soul, we could have emotional issues. We could have depression. We could suffer from anxiety. We can suffer from mental confusion and even a spiritual confusion. We can have um, dizziness. And so all of these issues are related to the soul. And I think the most important thing is that we have to look through our past and through the things that have happened to us and begin to look at those things through the lens of love, through the lens of the Bible. You know, it um, reminds me of Psalms 24, three that says, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? And then you jump down a few verses and it says, who has not lifted up his soul to what is false. Mm. So that means that we need to be declaring truth. We That's need to so be great. declaring God's truth over our soul, that we are forgiven, yeah. that we are wanted, that we are lovable, that we have a purpose, that his plan for us is good. We need to be declaring those things over our soul yeah. so that we are then having truth in our soul, having truth in our spirit, and the confusion leaves, the anxiety leaves, the depression leaves when we're declaring truth over ourselves. Yeah, amen, that's so good. And, and that can seem scary for a lot of us because that involves allowing some pain to bubble. But mm -hmm. you know, I wanna, I wanna say to you right now that are watching, if this seems scary, if it seems frightening to allow pain to surface, you know, Jesus said it and we said it before, he's saying, come to me. So what, he's, what I hear in that is you're not doing it alone, are you? Mm -hmm. You're, you're doing it right there with him. Mm -hmm. It's in his presence. He's, it's the invitation from the Son of God. He's saying, come to me, all who are weary mm -hmm. and heavy, and I'll give you rest for your mm -hmm. soul. Melanie, I'm so thankful that you were here today. And um, make sure that you you can, what's your website, Melanie, that they Nourished can? Nourished in Eden. Nourishedineden.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you can pick up a copy of Melanie's book and you can see her seven steps that she went through to find wholeness and healing. And you can find that too. Um, this has been a fantastic episode. I'm so thankful that you are here. I'm thankful for everything that you have inside of you to give and that you're giving it. And we'll definitely have to have you on again thank <laughs> sometime. You. All right. Well, thank you that have joined us. And I just pray a blessing over you right now that God would refresh and water your soul, that if you are weary, you'd find rest. Join us next time. I've got special guest Jerry Hill with me, and we'll be talking about being created to shine. You're created for the impossible too. Has God been stirring in your heart? Is there something that he's saying to you that you would love to just share? What is he doing in your life? What is he saying to you? We want to hear from you. The vision for this show is to come alongside you, journey with you, and make sure you know that you are not alone. Do you have a prayer need? That's one of those big things, and we would love to pray with you. Email us at prayer at createdfortheimpossible.com.